scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. And then I wanted to tell him politely in the most respectful way that, sir, I think there are many attacks around your life and you may need to say, ah, he shot me immediately. He said, don't talk to me about those things. Just I just came so do you agree with me <sighs> now i'm watching what this man is not saying this is not some um, i know what is wrong with this man and i'm seeing it and i want to respectfully as a fellow minister to say sir i love you with all my heart and i know what this problem is and he said no you just agree with me and i said oh god sometimes we really cause our problems I told him I said that's all right let's just pray the last thing he remembered was I said let's pray and that's the end of it cut the long story short for the next one week without exaggeration this man kept sending me text messages and said destiny there's long captivities Hear the word of the Lord. It's time for you to lead me. It's time to arise for your light is come. Are you praying? Please take this session seriously. Think of your children while you pray. Think of your ministry while you pray. Hallelujah. 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 Please hear me. I hope you love prayer because we are going to do a lot of it this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. You are going to pray this morning. Please don't allow anything to distract you this morning. Leave big man is it or leave whatever and focus on your destiny once and for all. And end this thing. So that your victory, listen, victory is real in this spirit. Don't, don't think because of long-standing issues you now feel like victory. No, no, victory is real. You can walk in the experience of it. One more prayer. In the name of Jesus, every altar programmed over my destiny, over my family, by the blood of Jesus, I come against you this morning. Lift your voice and pray. Blotting out every hand, writing scripture says, and every ordinance that spoke against us, he nailed it to his cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please.
Please sit down. Sit down. It will take us a week long to discuss this subject, but I'll just capture a few details that we may need, and then we'll pray. Please, um, if if pastor will allow, let me respectfully plead. How many of you came with your requests? While I'm teaching, I would plead with the ushers, if you can, you can just, just wave it around and you carry the, the basket and just collect those requests. Let's collate them, sir. If it will not interrupt your protocol, I would just want the request to be in front here. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 17. This is a very interesting scripture that is a classic on the reality of deliverance. The Bible says, but upon Mount Zion, look at the protocol. It's a on Mount Zion. There shall be deliverance. Number one, after deliverance, there shall be holiness. Then, number three, the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. So the end product is that you come into the reality of your inheritance. But the Bible says there is a spiritual protocol that leads to that. There shall be deliverance. Not outside Mount Zion. Upon Mount Zion. What is deliverance? In Exodus chapter 6, six let's look at it quickly. Exodus chapter 6 from verse 6, I hope. It says, Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord and I will bring you out and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgment. This is a system for experientially establishing the victory and the authority of Jesus Christ. I'll take time to dictate it. That deliverance is a system for experientially establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ over Satan, over demons, over the powers of darkness concerning our lives. Deliverance is a system for experientially establishing the victory an authority of Jesus Christ over Satan, demons, and all the powers of darkness concerning our lives. That means that in, in its essence, scripturally speaking, deliverance is not so much about fighting. It is rather about establishing experientially the victory that has been wrought in Christ over Satan, over demons, over the entire arsenals of darkness concerning our lives and our destinies. This is very powerful. I wrote something here that deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare for the believer It's about establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting for it.
dynamics. I'm rushing for give me number two. The second access point for Satan in the life of the saints is ignorance. Ignorance. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. Apostle Paul is teaching Ephesians 4 and verse 18. 18 having their understanding darkened he says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart Ephesians 4 18 that ignorance can alienate you from the experience of this Zoe life that whilst it is true that this is the testimony that God had given us eternal life and he says that this life is in his son so that he that hath the son hath life but that your ignorance will rob you of walking in the experience of this light in fact the assignment of the God of this world according to Apostle Paul is to blind the minds of those who are believers or those who are the inhabitants of the earth so that the light of the glorious gospel will not be received by them so covenants ignorance the third access point is disobedience 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 it says having the readiness to judge disobedience all disobedience when your obedience is complete when your obedience is complete thank you sir thank you very much let's just allow this upon this altar here disobedience Deuteronomy chapter 28 when you read from verse 1 to 12 it talks about the blessings that follow you when you obey it says it shall come to pass if that all that I command you this day then it says you shall be exalted above all nations and these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you then the first 12 verses he begins to list all of them and then he now tells you what comes upon you when you walk in disobedience covenants ignorance disobedience these are the three biblical access points for Satan and demons in the life of the saints it's a very important information that we must have now please write this quickly according to scripture again there are three levels of satanic influences on earth I want to explain that very quickly I've done a whole, whole teaching on this series It's called the mystery of deliverance part one to four you can access it online is free and then just take Take your time and listen to understand this subject. Number one, the first level of satanic influence according to scripture is called deception. This is the first level. It's called deception. 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 Second Peter chapter 2 from verse 2 then we'll jump to 12 and 13. The Bible says, and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. A system of deception. Go to verse 12. It says, but these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Verse 12. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes spotting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. There are people, listen, the level of deception will can happen to you whether you are a prayer warrior whether you are a pastor is a level that being born again does not exempt you from are we together yes Paul calls it witchcraft he said oh foolish Galatians who has bewitched you he's speaking to Christians deception in fact Apostle Paul said the spirit speaketh expressly that in the later times some shall depart from the faith he says and shall give heed to seducing spirits he called it and the doctrines of demons these are not people who are bad these are just people who are victims of the deceptions of Satan the first level is deception deception 
it is the assignment one of the names of satan is a deceiver he is a master at it he can deceive the entire world i think it's revelations 12 and verse 9 if i'm not mistaken please give it to us 12 and 9 let's hurry up revelations 12 and 9 and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceived how many the whole world he was cast out into the earth and the angels were cast with him look how satan is a master of deception he was cast out from the earth and what we know is that he was just roaming around the, the horizons of this side of god's kingdom but by the time jesus comes to the earth satan had become the captain of but the kings of the earth a man who had no inheritance through history had deceived the kings and now had control even authority and he told jesus bow to me all the glories of this earth they are mine he's a master deceiver number two the second level of satanic influence is called manipulation and control manipulation and control this exists in the realm of the mind manipulation and control matthew chapter 16 and verse 23 matthew 16 and 23 look at this satan comes to jesus not gain access to jesus in matthew chapter 4 the temptation the next time he would come he did not come to jesus directly again he used the compassion of a man called peter satan does not only use negative attributes he can use good things about peter to try to beckon on jesus not to go to the cross and jesus discerning he said no this is not just a compassionate peter he turned and said to him peter he said get thee behind me satan and peter is wondering me and he said i've seen more than you do not i've seen more than you can see he says thou art an offense unto me for thou severest not the things that be of god but those that be of men peter he said peter satan has desired to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not he says and when thou art converted use this same formula strengthen your brethren because he will come for them it's amazing that you can say jesus is the lord right now and yet you do not know that your mind is under siege manipulation and control luke chapter 22 and verse 31 i show you scriptures like this because when you are dealing with very sensitive subjects is important to allow the bible speak for itself and the lord said simon simon behold satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat 32 he says but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen your brethren the third level of satanic influence is called possession complete influence and control over an individual possession as we have in mark chapter 5 the story of the madman in gadara we may not have the time to read it but you just write it down possession now there has been an, an age-long controversy in the body of christ whether christians can, can be possessed or not and this has created a lot of control Oversee. that is because many people believe that the only dimension of satanic influence is possession and once you are free from possession you are free i believe according to the authority of scripture and according to the the full import of what salvation carries that if one has been grafted to christ and his one spirit i do not believe that that individual can be possessed in terms of his spirit and his entire faculties because the bible says he that is joined to christ is one spirit so according to the authority of scripture we can agree that that sp the spirit of that man has been joined to christ but you are not a spirit alone you have a mind and you have a body are we together now so it is possible that you you may never be possessed 
yes, in as much as we believe possession to be, but that does not mean you are free from demons and the activities of demons. Manipulation and control, when extended, can look equal to possession because when they hijack your mind completely. So many believers do not concentrate on this. They say, I'm born again. Again, I've given my life to Jesus Christ, and yet you watch that there are different levels of demonic manipulations in their lives. And then they refuse and say, no way, Satan cannot access my spirit. You are right. Even the body of Moses, Satan wanted it. When Paul was praying that you be preserved, he said that you are preserved spirit, soul, and body. Hallelujah. Why did Satan want the the body of Moses so he could enter it and if he arises as Moses everybody who believed in Moses will believe in that voice because the way the devil does is he fights you when he cannot get you he will try to fraternize with you so the day you are not there they can listen to him this is what happened in the book of Acts oh these are great men that have come to preach the truth so that the day Paul finishes his crusade and goes you say I saw you with Paul this is already a lesson for us ministers. We must be careful. Your, the, you, you, you rub up your integrity on associations and love everybody, but there is no command in scripture that association is compulsory. You have the right to choose. There's no such thing as once a friend, always a friend. No, you are a friend to the degree to which your values are consistent with the patterns of the king kingdom and if they are just taught to press this in once and for all there's this pressure all around and, and people continue I, I say it respectfully we are not this is not a call to condemnation but that you must trust God for grace to purify the sacrifice of your work with God for the sake of those you are ministering to please sit down sirs are we together so we have deception, we have manipulation and control, we have possession. Write this down, please. The greatest strength of Satan, one factor that will make him very look powerful over the lives of believers is called the flesh. The flesh. Not sin, the flesh. The sin problem was dealt with by the substance institutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross but when it has to do with the flesh the flesh is a system that you die daily to it you don't cast away the flesh what is the flesh write this down the outworking of the sin nature manifested in ideologies lifestyle and motifs is called the flesh the outworkings of the sin nature manifest in ideologies manifested in lifestyle and manifested in motifs the state of the heart this is the greatest strength of Satan over the life of the believer it is not necessarily sin because the moment you declare the Lordship of Jesus Christ and even if you come to him in repentance and brokenness according to the authority of Scripture the Bible says if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us it's but if we confess our sins that God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness so the sin problem had been dealt with in Christ but the flesh a way of thinking a way of living and, and the state of your heart this can authorize darkness indefinitely over the life of a believer hallelujah The flesh is a nature of living, thinking, and acting that is against the ways of God. Now, this is very, very important. I have to jump. Let's deal with the three levels of deliverance. This is where I was really coming to. This is, this is, all those are just support information to guide us so that we can deal with this the three levels of deliverance, what I call complete deliverance. This is important for us, respectfully speaking, as men and women of God to note 
that in administering what we call deliverance to the saints, it is not just something we just pray and cast out spirits. There are rules of engagement. And not knowing this is the reason why you find out that many people supposedly are free for a while and then they return back. Jesus taught extensively on the activities of demons and in one of his discourse this is what he said that when a spirit leaves a man so we know that spirits can leave men the Bible says that that spirit will go through dry regions is that true seeking for a place of refuge and not finding any the spirit will tell itself that I will go back to my house the man is free but the devil still calls that place my house and the Bible says that when it comes, it will find that man who he calls his house swept, clean, but empty. Then it will go and gather several other spirits higher than itself in ranking and come and camp and build a stronghold around that man so that the end of that man is worse than the way he was. This is as discussed by Jesus himself. Now, before we talk about the three levels of deliverance, listen to me. I hope you know that Africa as a continent, by the grace of God, we trust that our children, and if Christ tarries our children's children, will have the opportunity to walk upon this territory free of the orchestrations of darkness. Because there will be a generation that will be determined to pay that price and detach them from it. But culturally speaking, the tragedy of Africa is that many of our fathers, before the missionaries brought the gospel, in as much as we know it, all that they knew was traditional worship. Are we together now? They were sincere people. But these demons came to propose ideas to fraternize with them for sin safety, to fraternize with them for fertility, to fraternize with them for um, increased prosperity. So they entered myriads of covenants on behalf of their children and their children's children, even to the fourth generation. Protect us from war, from our neighboring enemies. And in response, we will serve you. While that agreement was happening, you were not there. Just like when Jesus was dying, you were not there. Are we together now? And so these spirits kept their own part. I, I once traveled to a place in this nation where they showed me a rock. And they said there was a history around that rock that in times of war, the rock would open up physically and people would enter into it to, to hide. Some of the few old people who were at life said they entered it but the condition is that the rock will eat the first person and the last person so the you are a sacrifice whoever you are first to enter and then if, if you are lazy and you are the last to enter you know that you are gone now now watch this listen carefully there are other people who made covenants with waters protect our people from war there is a place in this nation that when enemies come to fight, the city disappears, literally. The people will stand and just see a plain land, and yet there is a city there. Because the spirits entered a covenant with this people. Now, I don't mean to create any theological controversy, but when you study other extra-biblical texts, not necessarily erroneous texts, texts that did not make it, they were not canonized to be part of scripture, are we together now? But they are also made reference in scripture. You will see that it was some of these spirits that came and taught the inhabitants of the earth certain concepts on how to conjure spirits through fire. They used the elements of nature and the supernatural. The devil came and taught people these things. And he would receive allegiance as a result. Hallelujah. Yes. So we came from families. When the missionaries came from the West to, to come and preach, they, they only knew the gospel of salvation, most of them. Listen carefully. The gospel of salvation is the fundamental gospel. But I, 
I tell you by the authority of scripture, it is not the only gospel. Jesus Christ himself revealed to us the word gospel there means proclamation, good news. And there is a body of truth that Jesus brought that he called the gospel. The gospel of salvation is the revelation of the father's love to mankind demonstrated in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of the Christ. The object of that love is man and creation. Creation. Are we together now? And under the gospel of salvation, man does not do anything. His assignment is to believe that report. And to one, when he believes it as true, his reward for believing is the way, the life of God. What the Bible calls eternal life. But that's not the only gospel. There is a gospel the Bible calls the gospel of the kingdom. In the gospel of the kingdom, Jesus is not savior. He is king. Man is not just a receiver. Man is a witness. So these are dynamics. The missionaries did not know this. They sincerely came with the gospel of salvation because they were largely missionaries. And when they came and met our fathers, they destroyed shrines and died the next day. They said they died with, of malaria, but we know now with spiritual intelligence that it was not malaria that killed them. Are we together now? Yes. So the average person who comes from this territory already has a backlog of spiritual things to deal with. Now, it's an uncomfortable truth, but I pray that God will give us grace to understand this. And you see, according to scripture, the dynamics of the operation of darkness is that it is territorial in nature. And they preserve their doings around territory by the ministry of spirits that we call familiar spirits. That, that these spirits are the spirits that grow with the inhabitants of territories. When you read the Bible, when Jesus Christ was casting out the demons from the madman in Gadara, they pleaded that he does not re relocate them to another territory because they had been in that territory for a long time. They agree with the people. They have mastered the culture and the activities of people. They are responsible for creating Creating mind control patterns. So you find out that there is a region where it is the women that feed the men. Have you seen that kind of thing? Some of you, it's happening in your own families. No matter how hardworking the person is, he will spend 10 years in the U.S. and return back. There are families where the elder ones serve the younger ones. There are families where all the men do not live long. They have a lifespan. These are patterns I'm showing you, not to scare you. We are believers, and there is victory in Christ. But I'm just opening you up to this reality. There are spirits that clamp down poverty. You would see professors within a territory. There are territories where the oldest person living does not cross 50. The territory is full of young people who cannot mentor younger ones because there is a spirit that cuts the heritage of good things. There are families that are made of old, old people. Every time the old man wants to die, he comes back alive and a young man dies for it. You read your Bible, you will see that kings leave their children to maintain their own life. Are we together? There are families where marriages never work. The moment the woman gets married, the lifespan of peace is two years. She must return back to her father's house. So you see fathers, even in their old age, taking care of the entire children. There are families where if you rise, it's like a spiritual meter watching you. If you hit a threshold of achievement, you must go down no matter what happens this as i'm saying it many of you are looking at your lives you are seeing it that you go to bed and you are finding yourself in an old house an old secondary school you are writing an exam that never finishes don't, don't say it does not matter i'm giving you meaning to your experiences the moment they say you are writing a promotion exam there you you go to bed in the night. Someone comes either to sleep with you or do something. Or, and then the next person who vowed to help you looks at you. And it's as if a spell is cast on them. 
There are ladies, if a man says he loves you, it's a spirit that will appear and warn him. And say, you, if you don't leave this lady, he won't tell you what he saw. woman's life that is responsible for the backwardness of the man so i will just interpret based on what i've seen and i'll say this woman is a witch she may not be a witch but the truth is she's connected to something a, a foundation that is having an obvious implication on her husband ah your life will change today oh. there are families that have race presidents in this nation have raised politicians in this nation and yet they may not have a house of their own have you seen people like that they will tell you by god's grace i raised this one i advised this senator i helped him in fact it was me that told him to run for senate there are people the evil covering on you makes sure that every good person forgets you you labor over people for a long time when it it's time to help you. And some of us are men of God. Sincerely so. You fast and pray with people with all your heart. Hallelujah. I know families where men do not leave. The wife of the sons of the prophet. All the men in her life were about to leave. The widow at Nain. Her husband died, her only child died, and Jesus said, no, this is a pattern. This is not just the issue of resurrection. Hallelujah. You get a job and you rejoice. Everybody celebrate with me. You are dancing. The Lord has done me well. And from that day that you announce it, you go down immediately. This is why many of our parents today and grandparents don't love God again when you ask them they'll say look we are the ones who brought Renard Bonke to Nigeria we brought T.L. Osborne those days we love God God has failed me we gave our all and God failed us leave me to go back to my traditional worship let me tell you what Satan is looking for Satan is not looking for your money he does not need it Satan is not looking for your marriage what Satan wants is transgenerational allegiance transgenerational allegiance bow down to me let your children bow down to me but there's someone in this place you won't bow in the name of Jesus the son of the living God Satan is not interested in membership no Satan is not interested in health no have you seen people that is the same pattern of sickness that kills everybody Twenty years, and all of a sudden, a particular pattern of sickness. The younger one, twenty years. Have you seen your loved ones sharing the dream that you two you had when you were their age? They will say, "Mama, I don't know why, but someone came to me in the night, an old woman." And your mother starts looking at you in a strange way. Say, "How did she dress?" And she describes it. I say, "Oh, next week is your birthday." Have you seen people that have two two year or three three year cycles? Something tragic tragic must happen, whether death or loss. Every two two years, these are patterns that are caused by familiar spirit. But in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, today those patterns die completely in your life. Listen. I come from a family where the men never rise sustainably. So I know what I'm saying. I'm not preaching nonsense. He says the things that we have seen, the things that we have heard, even that which our hands have handled of the word of life. I know people who have spent decades in the U.S., decades in the U.K., and when it is time, these spirits call them back. They return back like thieves. And they come and sit back in 
a village and die. Deliver us from evil. Hallelujah. There are territories where no matter how nice the man and the wife to the children, the children must become rebellious. More An accident have you seen people who build houses just when they are about to celebrate by the next day the whole house will crash they say one wind just came and pushed the house or those who build the house to celebrate it the next day they will die there are families that never eat the fruit of their labor just when good things are about to happen Hallelujah. Why am I telling you this? Because I'm about to show you the forces of deliverance. There are some of you, the call of God upon your life. If these altars are displaced, you will be surprised. It's the reason why nobody hears you. Who can lift you always comes late. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Nathaniel was attesting to the fact that territories can carry spirits and altars and controlling powers that keep them keep people down. Jesus never looked and said, Nathaniel, you are lying. He said, No, leave him. Girl. In other words, he's not, not lying. Hallelujah. There are families that you move forward, but you are pace is too slow. The first person builds a house at 70 years. The earliest person to anybody attempts to demonstrate speed in that family. This altars cuts them off immediately. Please sit down. Three levels of deliverance so that we can start praying. Mm. Number one. The first level of deliverance from scripture. Casting out the spirit influences in your life and at the back of your challenges. That is the first level of deliverance. Casting out the spirit influences in your life and behind your challenges. Spirits do not just oppressed people spirits can live in circumstances that, that means your problem can have a spirit behind it that's what i mean spirits don't just oppress lives alone they can enter situations and empower them a spirit can enter a court case issue and something that should a simple issue can last for decades till it makes you poor. That one you know it's not an ordinary court case again. A spirit can fraternize with headache. Something that you can just take Panadol and let it go. And that thing will remain for 14 years. Hospital will not diagnose it. Every time you see things that the physical laws cannot solve, there is a spirit that is making it alive. James chapter 2 and verse 26. Apostle James was teaching us on faith and works and he borrowed a phenomenon of the spirit and the body to explain it to us. He says for as the body without a spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. So every body needs a spirit to be alive. By body I don't just mean human body. Problems are bodies. There is a spirit that empowers them. Are we together? Together. 
casting out the casting out the spirits is biblical it's not demonic it's not satanic to cast out devils the bible gives it as a mandate to believers when jesus announced his messianic prophecy he took out time to cast out demons to heal and to do all of these things when he commissioned the apostles he said heal the sick cast out demons cleanse the lepers raise the dead freely you have received freely give when given the great commission he said this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out demons so there are spirits behind the situations of people you don't solve those problems by counseling are we together now yes it was Paul that began to express his frustration even as an apostle in Romans chapter 7 Heaven. He said that I see a war in my members, he said, so that the things that I do not want to do, I find myself doing them. And the things that I want to do, I do not find myself doing them. He says, for with my spirit, I serve the Lord. But in my body, that is my flesh, I see another war walking within my members. He was so frustrated. He said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body? Body of death. Then chapter 8 verse 1 says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk after, not after Christ Jesus who walk after, not after the flesh If you like hide your money inside your shoe, it's like word of knowledge. Those demons would push them. They would just look and open. It's not normal. Have you seen people like that? Break the wall and keep your money. They will pass and stand in front of that wall and look at it. They don't know what is driving them. It's a spirit. You don't solve it out by flogging and by counseling. Hallelujah. So casting out the spirit influences. Now, this is a part of deliverance that is prevalent in the apostolic and the prophetic ministry. We believe in casting out of demons. And once it is done within the allowance of scripture, that is fine. But this is not the only dimension. Please listen to me. This is the reason why many people's deliverance is not complete. They continue to do it again and again and again and again because casting out demons is not the only requirement for complete deliverance. Number two, the second level of deliverance is conform to this world the word world is the greek word aeon the thinking pattern that comes with this cosmos it says but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may prove what is that good acceptable and perfect will of god so the bible says to be transformed philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 it says to permit this mind to be in you which was also in christ jesus there was a belief construction that was in Christ Jesus that made him to manifest as the son of God he said let that mind also be in you this is where I will respectfully observe that the apostolic and the prophetic ministry largely are not getting it quite well we do well in casting out demons but the ministry of the word the preaching of deliverance through the transforming power of the word is not there. When you cast out these demons, watch this. The spirits go away, but that door is still open. Deliverance through transformation is like closing the door through knowledge. Are we together? The Bible says, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. 
when you do not understand the principles of the kingdom it will make even your deliverance look like it is not profitable and can i tell you this over the years demon spirits have studied the church and have studied men of god they have known that many of us have not understood this dimension of deliverance so when you cast those demons they go out happy because they, they will be waiting for the person at, at the junction there they know that that door is still open so before you say anything they go happily they know that next week the man is back with them deliverance through transformation what does this mean a reorientation of your spirit you close the door of the flesh through ignorance you tear down strongholds thought patterns that is a dimension of deliverance that's why it's important that the saints be taught the word of god when these spirits are casted out of you you should not just be left like that you are now mentored and taught the word of God. Do you know how Jesus trained the disciples? He spent three and a half years teaching them, doing something to their minds. Afterwards, he said, you are ready. In fact, he did not even finish his curriculum with them. When he resurrected, he had no time to celebrate his victory. He said, guys, get back to class. We have 50 more days. 40 days I'm with you and then I ascend to heaven. And he was teaching them on the matters of the kingdom. The teaching ministry is the secret to sustainable deliverance. Write it down. The teaching ministry is the secret to sustainable deliverance. More than casting out the spirit influences. Because mindsets are doorways, they are gateways that authorize both the Holy Spirit and demon spirits into the life of a believer. Hallelujah. Deliverance through trans deliverance through transformation. That there is a spirit and a pattern in the life of this man and his family are we together now and he comes toward a life and reverend godwin while ministering under the unction of the spirit will cast out the spirit from this man now we agree from the authority of god's word that this man the spirit has left are we together now me help her just goes away from me okay and the spirit influence is casted out of him but he still does not guarantee he will get a job he still does not guarantee that he will have good people because there are laws in the kingdom that control some of these results for instance the law of honor i've taught you the law of honor many times you've listened to these messages and you've heard me mentor the body of christ on the law of honor are we together now yes so this man this is the guy that god has destined to bless him watch this this is the man who is going to give him a job or a contract or a lifting this man has been delivered of that spirit but he's bankrupt of spiritual knowledge he will pass this man pass him every day and yet his breakthrough will not come because although the spirit is not there he has not been transformed to know that there is honor Oh, no he won't greet he is rude he is arrogant there is no demon but he will still not rise because he has not been cultured on the systems and the methods of the kingdom now i teach this man on diligence and the power of character are you seeing now this is another level of deliverance the next time he meets his destiny helper what happens good afternoon sir just this act and the man says ah young man i've been seeing you every day you look very smart um, what is wrong? And he says, I've been trusting God for a job. He said, you mean it? And you know, is jo I'm just about to give somebody a job somewhere. A miracle just happened. Now, it is not the spirit. It is now the knowledge, the teaching of the word that has brought character in this young man. There are many, many young Nigerians in need. Demons have been casted out of them. But 
but because the methodologies of the kingdom have not been taught them they are still not delivered it's called deliverance through transformation so when you cast out the spirit influence is just one of the steps now what largely the apostolic and the prophetic ministry does is that they will cast out demons from this man and after he's free after two months he comes back and says man of god i i don't feel that thing i used to feel again but my life has still not changed are you seeing that now there is a plethora of bad behavior ignorance in the life of this man the teaching ministry is the key to sustaining deliverance are we together yes so you see these guys now and this man comes for instance he wants to increase now the demon of poverty that sits on his family has been casted out but he still remains poor and then he comes to sit on during a financial series here and here's your pastor teaching that there is he that scattereth and yet increases. there is he that withholds more than his meat and tends to poverty that the diligent hand shall be made fat out together that the lazy man because of the weather will not sow and he will beg in harvest now the teaching is is recalibrating his mind there is a construction of spiritual understanding according to colossians chapter 1 verse 9 please give it to us colossians 1 are we together yes so this man is taught he came from a family of idol worship, came from a family of negative demonic priesthood and sits under this unction and fire lands from heaven, gets that spirit out, but the man is still not free. And then after one year of proper mentorship, the teaching ministry, exposing him to the dimensions of the kingdom, now the man is strong. He knows what prayer does. He knows what diligence does. He knows what honor does he knows what character does are we together now he knows what speaking the word does this man is fortified in a way that those demons will not come again hmm. could this be where some of us are now no matter who lays hands on you and no matter what demons are casted out when the madman in gathering was delivered of of those spirits the bible says they came and they met him sitting down in the lecture hall of jesus in his right mind jesus in his right mind them and so it is that ignorance that makes satan to look so powerful that he can veto whatever it is and bless you know, and, and oppress you no sir satan does not have that kind of power even jesus knocks at the door of your heart and patiently waits for you to open if the son of god knocks your heart why shouldn't spirits knock i tell you they are knocking but they have taught you a way of opening it without knowing. There is no spirit authorized to veto through the will of men. It is not given to them. At the expense of your eternal salvation, the Savior knocks and waits for you to use your will to open. Listen, what you know about God and what you know about Satan matters. Let me tell you a secret. Do you know if this man has a dream now? Watch this. If this man has a dream, and in that dream he sees someone shooting him, or an arrow fired into his body, are you together? Or, or something demonic, he can get up and say, ah, so this is how my life is. He does not know that that very act is an act of permission in the spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? See, Satan is a master of the flesh realm. And according to the law of birthing and the law of reproduction, it will take the seed from the man meeting with the woman to have a child. Are we together? Watch this. The dreams that Satan projects to you, they are like seeds from a man. They need a fertilization. 
the same way a man can plant a seed and a woman's womb can reject the seed, you can also reject those projections. Please listen. There is nothing in the realm of the spirit that is absolute. It depends on men for it to happen. No matter how real you see that dream, no matter how real you see, Satan knows that, that you may not have that knowledge. So you get up saying, this thing was real. I'm even sweating. It's over. That is over. It's like the woman receiving seed. Hmm. Yes. So when you get up and have those dreams, and then you are fortified by this understanding, barrenness is a reality in our lives. You can make your relationship with Satan look like barrenness. That no matter how many seeds, the Bible says that there are three things that never say enough. One of it is the barren womb. So no matter how many times Satan... Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.